Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Oh, Mama. Yes, dear? Listen to the air. I don't hear anything. The birds, the buds, the bees, and spring. Mm, Just one more month. And one more month, it'll be a year we're up at the farm. That's an anniversary to celebrate. I wasn't always so sure you'd make it. Oh, neither was I at first. But now, I don't don't know how you can stand the thought of ever going back to New York. Oh, it has its advantages. What? Pull that shade down, Claudia. The sun's coming right in my eyes. Isn't it wonderful how the living room's always filled with sunshine? Yes. When there is sunshine. Uh, Mrs. Norton, uh, can I speak with you f- for a moment? Of course, Fritz. Come on in. Is anything wrong with Majesty? <laughs> with that cow, nothing is ever wrong. Only that she gives so much milk. Yes, it's coming out of my ears. You should be grateful, Hush. Uh, it is about another cow, Mrs. Norton. The heifer? Oh, Fritz, don't tell me she started giving milk too. Good heavens. Mrs. Norton, she's not even a mother. Oh, oh, that's true. Yes, of course. Well, nature has protected us, but for how long, Fritz? It will be two years before we can breed her and she freshens. She will not give milk until then. You mean then she's not good for anything for two years? How wonderful. Well, that's a fine farmer's attitude. She's good for calf's liver. Fritz, please don't mention her liver. Claudia, Fritz didn't come here to discuss the heifer's liver. He's a busy man. I'm not that busy, but the matter is urgent. Mrs. Norton, uh, Mr. Bell, uh, he lives up the road, you know. Oh, oh, I know. The Mr. Bell who sold us the tractor and broke his arm last June. Yes, I know him. A few weeks ago, he mentions to Mr. Norton and me he has several cows he wants to sell. Yes, I know that too, Fritz. I know David thought about it for a while. Then he decided not to think about it. But those two cows he was talking about, he's selling cheaper now because he does not have barn space. You mean the, the, the same cows? And they are so beautiful. Uh, now, Mr. Bell, he calls me up and says that he has been given an offer of, uh, for one of the cows, mm-hmm. uh, the better one. And if you would like to buy her, we must hurry and not think anymore. Oh, dear. Well, David did fall in love with that cow. But Fritz, he said no. How much did the other man bid? Uh, $375. We can have her for 400 a fine buy. Four hundred? That's more than Majesty. <laughs> Majesty was a bargain. But who has four hundred dollars these days? It is many dollars, I admit. But not so much for a cow like she is. Mm, that's right. uh, she is from a seven-star bull. Seven stars? Twenty oh, quarts of milk. Mm, that's good. Mm, good. Terrific. Listen, with the twenty quarts of milk we're getting from Majesty, Ma, do you realize that would be forty quarts a day? No, I can't even look one quart in the face, so don't buy for me. And if you take my advice, you won't buy her at all, especially without David. We're not buying her yet. Can you handle two cows, Fritz? Two cows? <laughs> a dozen is nothing. Oh, a dozen cows is an awful lot of cows to have in the house. Claudia, you're not seriously thinking Yes, of... I'm seriously thinking. Well, you sound like you wanted to open a dairy. Well, I don't think you know what you're talking about. Mama, look, we can amortize the cow. Is that the word? Amortize? Yes, Claudia, there is such a word in the dictionary, but I'm not sure you know what it means. Well, we can, whatever it is, the cow, by selling her milk. Since we won't have to pay for any added labor, and since we have the feed and the barn space, I guess we can uh, amortize her in a little over a year, $400. Gosh, I like that word, amortize, lovely. Besides, a cow doesn't depreciate much either. Say, Mama, what's amortizing again? Mm. I knew you were using words you didn't know the meaning of. Certainly I know the meaning of it. I think, what is it? Amortize means pay for itself by earnings. That's what I think I thought. Uh, Mrs. Newton, if we are ever going to get another cow, I, I hate to let this one buy for $400. I know how you feel, Fritz. I felt that way about Majesty. I felt I simply had to have her. Uh, would you like to come over and see her with me? No, oh, Why don't I'll... you stop all this talk and call David? Well... 
First place I can't, he's not at his office, Mama. He isn't? He's going to be wandering around Long Island today. You know, I've... I never decided anything so expensive without David. Mama, well, what do you think? Oh, I told you. I'm not butting in. This is your affair. If you butt in, we'll name the cow after you. Oh, thank you, dear. You can spare me that honor. <laughs> you know, I don't think it's ever too soon to make a dream come true, is it? Not if you can afford it. But, Claudia, can you afford it? Well, I suppose we could scrape up $400. Scrape someplace. it up. From where? Well, I don't know where everyone scrapes up $400 from. If we can't scrape it up, we can borrow it. That'll be nice. David will love that. Oh, David will find a way of borrowing it without going into debt. I hate going into debt. If David can do that. He can handle my finances. Are you sure, Fritz, that you'll have time to milk both the cows? A man always has time for the things he wants. That's what David says. Well, Fritz... I've made up my mind. You tell Majesty to push over. She's going to have some competition. Claudia, you're not buying it. A cow is a her, Mama. Yes, I am. I'm buying her. Fritz, call up Mr. Bell and tell him to send the cow over to us. She's ours. David, do you enjoy your supper? Yes, I enjoyed my supper. Good, I'm glad. Well, I don't mind. I'll sit on your lap even if you are full of dinner, darling. Mm. Oh, all right, I'll sit on a chair. Um, uh, uh, David. Now what? Not a thing. Then I can read the paper. No, no, I, I guess you better not. I, I have something to tell you. Yes, and, and I'm going upstairs. Mama, don't go. Goodbye. Mama, you can't leave your daughter at a time like this. I've left her. Goodbye. You... I'll remember this, you traitor. What's going on here? What's Mama done now? See, that woman has no feeling for her daughter. Why should she? Have you done something wrong again? Well, what a way to talk. Oh, darling. Uh, did you smell the air today? Hmm? Do you realize it's almost spring? Mm-hmm. It means a lot of work ahead for Fritz. We can turn the cows out to pasture. That'll make it easier, won't it? No, not much. Oh. Well, anyway, cows aren't much work, are they? No, not for you and me. We're going to have to drink the stuff. It's a lot of work for Fritz on top of everything else. Oh, he likes it. Or he says he does. And he'd kill himself at it if we didn't stop him. Mm. Someday when we get rich, then we can have a herd. Do you, do you have to be very rich? Mm, fairly. And we're not. <laughs> Very not. Mm, I see. Oh, by the way, David, have we got $400? Of course we have $400. Well, then I think we're rich. $400 is not rich. You mean we have $400 without selling anything to, to get the money? Yeah, well, of course. <sighs> you don't think I'd let us go on with so little cash in reserve, do you? Well, then actually we can afford something that costs $400, don't you think? No, we could not. But you just said we... You know perfectly well that we have a certain amount of money in the bank for emergencies. If we spend $400 at a clip, well, it just wouldn't be healthy. Mm, I see. David, you, you, you've you always said that when you spend money buying something, it's still like having the money because it's an investment, haven't you? It depends on what you buy. It doesn't always work. Well, now, I can see that spending $400 to go on a trip or something is, is throwing money away because what have you got when you get back? Just a sunburn and a cold in the head, that's all. You haven't got anything you can put your finger on. Do you uh, want to go on a trip? No, I don't want to go on a trip. But if I spent $400 buying something, something good and valuable and with a resale value, why, then it's not like spending the $400 at all, is it? Well, you can't get much for $400 that's really valuable. But still, darling, it wouldn't be like spending the money. You know, like going out and throwing it away or something. Mm -hmm. No, no, it wouldn't be like that. Oh, that's a relief. Now, if you have that settled in your mind, uh, just tell me, what have you gone and done? What do you mean, gone and done? You can't fool me by beating around the bush now. You've gone and done something. Mm, you think you're very smart, don't you? But in case you're just thinking about it, whatever it is, let me hasten to tell you, don't do it. Don't? No. 
We haven't four hundred dollars to throw around even to buy something with. Hmm. Well, that complicates me. David. Hmm? What do you want more than anything else in the world? Peace and quiet. And after that? Silence. And after that, David, wouldn't you like to look out your window and see a flock of cows grazing out in the pasture? A flock of cows, Claudia, is called a herd, and in about ten years, I'd like to look out the window and see a herd. In ten years? Yes, I'm perfectly mm-hmm. satisfied with the way things are now. You are? About ten years, maybe, maybe five. We can get some more cows, but we have plenty for the present. One and a half cows is plenty, believe me. But, darling, just two weeks ago you were talking about getting more cows. No, there's many a slip between the lip and the cow. Then you mean you... you... Then if I had $400 to spare, I would not spend it on a cow. Definitely not? Definitely not. Oh. Well, that's too bad. If I had $400 to spare, which I don't, you understand, Mm. first thing I'd do is build that breakfast porch you want so badly. You would? Yeah, yes, I would. Oh, darling, you're so sweet. But I don't want it anymore. Well, since when? Since I bought the cow. <laughs> All you have to do is return it and... Claudia, what did you say? Now, David, now listen. You, you, you were driving around Long Island all day. I couldn't get you on the phone. And Fritz says it's a wonderful cow, so I, I bought it. And it was only $400. It's a very cheap $400. That's all. You bought a cow? Oh, David, don't look like that. Please don't be angry. Maybe we can sell it again to somebody else t- tomorrow. Mrs. Norton, come over here. David, don't shout. Please, Shout. Please. I just want to tell you that I had no idea, no idea on earth that you were this kind of a girl. What kind, David? An extravagant, headstrong. A girl who would spend our last $400. Every word you say is true, absolutely true. But the woman who would buy a cow with my last $400 is... Darling, at long last, the time has come that... that I must tell you that you are the woman I love. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. However much you may enjoy bargain hunting, there comes a moment when you feel the need of a rest. That's the time to drop a nickel in the friendly red cooler and enjoy the pause that refreshes with ice-cold Coca-Cola. After a delicious, sparkling Coke, you proceed with new zest because you shop refreshed. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. Mm -hmm.